Bag G, we are going to build the Pro Line 1.9 flat iron tires with the soft memory foam and the beadlock rims. So let's set this back here. We're going to put the battery out of the way. Grab a rim, grab a memory foam. Take and put that into. The rim, get her in there good and square and round. I have to work it around a little bit, make sure I'm all the way up into everything. Uh, on some of these tires, you may notice a little bit of molding slag or leftover on them. Any big chunks, try to cut it off because what it will do is kind of screw up your bead. It makes it makes it hard to get the the bead actually in the rim. Okay, once you got the foam into the tire, switch over to the rim. These are a non-directional tire, doesn't matter which way they go on, there is no outside or inside. Labeling's all the same. We're going to take and push the rim in here. I'm going to show you how to build one of these and then I'll do the other three. This is a time-consuming step because it's going to basically take me almost an hour, I would assume, to get all of these put together and screwed together. So we'll show you how to do one side of one, which, just like that. Grab bag G. That's the bag you're going to need with the beadlock rings. And the beadlock ring screws, which at this point we're going to take Gonna be careful with these, these are tiny. We'll cut these open and throw them into our parts tray here. Like so. Get the last one out of there. Okay. You got an inner and an outer ring. Inner ring is real wide open for clearance around the spindles and the axles. Outer ring is a lot thicker. We're going to start with the outer ring first. Get it lined up with your holes. Make sure your tire bead is in the groove on the rim. Now what you're going to want to do is do this in kind of a star pattern. I like to usually take and try to start these get each one started and then actually go around and tighten these up in a star pattern to bring the beadlock ring down evenly. You don't want to go too much on one side and not enough on the other side. So basically get them all in and started and then just start working your way around in a star pattern and suck that ring down nice and even. And once you're done with that side then you can go on to the other side. see why this takes a while. I don't like using a power driver on these because they are a small screw. They're going into plastic. It's real easy to run them in and go too far and strip the hole up. Just take your time, do them by hand. Okay, I'm going to run this one right down to the ring. I'll cross over to the other side. I'll run that one down to the ring. Let her pull in a couple of turns. Then I'm going to cross over here. Do the same with this one. Then I'm going to cross over to here, bring this one down onto the ring. A couple of turns, I'll cross over and I'll hit this one. Run this one a ways down. And I'll cross over to this one. Now just keep doing this back and forth until they're all down and good and tight. Cross over again, 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 
and notice them starting to get tighter and tighter. Cross over again. And this just basically equals the pulling power out all the way around the wheel. Again. And you'll feel it tighten up. You'll feel to the point where you can't. I'm just turning with my thumb and my index finger. I'm not using my whole hand to wrench on this. I kind of use my fingers strength. If I were to grab it and twist it with my whole hand, I'd pretty much do a number on them. Then what you can kind of do is roll it around. You'll actually be able to see if you've got her down tight all the way. And that's pretty good. That is on there good and tight, nice and even. Bead's not pinched anywhere. It's down in the ridge where it's supposed to be. Now the back side can be a little difficult because you've got the rim sucked on that one side of the tire. What I like to do is actually grab a battery that I've got. An old cell, an old socket, something like that will work. Generally what I like to do is pull down with that underneath the rim it allows the rim to stay in place but I can pull the bead and manipulate the bead and get it started in the groove and not have to fight the rim just like that take the inner ring Line her up. And what I'll do here is I'll get two of these started, one on each side, and I'm going to actually run them down until they're pushing on the rubber because that'll actually start to hold my bead in. Go like that. And I'll grab this one. run that down a ways and what that will actually do now is stop the bead from coming out my own editor just like so the beads actually set in now I can go back in put all my other screws in do the star pattern tighten up job and this wheel is done and I'll do the other three okay we've got all four tires and wheels mounted um, one thing I didn't do, and these are actually pretty soft and squishy without having to do it, I didn't drill any vent holes in these rims. I left them undrilled for now. We're going to drive it that way for a while. Uh, if you need to and want softer tires, drill a hole in them and basically it'll soften them up even more. These are pretty soft the way they are right now. I may drill them, I may not. We'll play with it, we'll see what happens. Anyways, those are all mounted. Uh, the next step, I'm going to grab the chassis here, bring that back in. Next step is to mount the hex hubs onto the axles themselves. We're going to cut open this last bag from that last part bag, dump that out. There's four aluminum black hex hubs in here. Now what's actually kind of nice about the kit, if you didn't want to run 1.9 tires, you could actually go back to the 2.2s if you want to put a bigger wheel on this, 